Today we're going to talk about a very interesting and very disturbing behavior pattern that most women have adopted and it's called the burnt toast syndrome. Now the reason why this topic came up is because one of my channel visitors came to the um, you know, to the channel and on the video that I created to promote the Saving Our Girls meet online meeting, she posted a series of suggestions that she thought would be good. Unfortunately, that was the wrong place to post those because I actually was going to delete the uh, promo for that for that meeting after the meeting took place. So I didn't really see where it made any sense to put it there. But one of the things that she posted, I did save, and it references a quote by an author named Richard Paul Evans about what he calls the burnt toast syndrome. I thought it was very interesting. So he says how he explains burnt toast syndrome is, for an example, he gave you making breakfast for your family, and there's only enough bread for one piece of toast per person. You accidentally burn one of the pieces. Who takes the burnt piece? And he said in his survey, most of the women said me. But see, he didn't ask me because I would have said I would have cut the bad boys in half or quarters. And then you just take what you need. And the burnt one would have went in the garbage can. There they ain't no burnt bread. Now, I have to say, though, one of the things that they teach you in uh, emergency CPR is if you don't have any uh, charcoal and somebody eats something that's toxic, you don't want them to, everything to be thrown up. Sometimes taking Ipipac and you know vomiting it up is not necessarily the best approach because the, the throat will get burned twice that way. So it's highly suggested that you eat burnt toast in that case because the burn uh, absorbs the toxins in your stomach just like charcoal would. So there is a time for burnt toast but this isn't the time and so we're going to talk about this uh, behavior pattern that a lot of women have. So what is that? What does that mean? Burnt toast syndrome is basically, to sum it up, it's when a woman takes responsibility for the happiness of everybody else and she puts herself last. In other words, you always take the burnt piece of toast. So you don't want anybody around you to feel displeased or disappointed or inconvenienced to have their feelings hurt, to be more tired than you, anything like that. You take the brunt of any potential problem onto your shoulders instead of putting it onto the other person's shoulders or someone else. But when a woman does do those things right, when she doesn't accept responsibility of caretaking, they're all codependent on somebody to make them happy at her expense, then she gets called names like feminist and gold digger and told that she's a bad mother, she's a poor wife, that's why her man cheated on her, that's why she can't hold a man. She's selfish, she's greedy, she's not nice. So in order for a woman to not be guilt-tripped and feel like there's something wrong with her and that she's not worthy, that she's not good enough, she overgives and sacrifices to make all these other people happy before she tries to even think about making herself happy. This is especially true once you have children. Now, in a situation like that, say you get married, right? You, you, these men think, okay, well, I'm getting married. You know, she's a ball and chain around my neck. I'll never be able to do anything. I'm giving up all my freedom, you know. And then the ones that come to the channel, they also worry about paying alimony and child support if they mess up the marriage and a woman leaves them. But in reality, that little funky alimony and that child support, that's for the kids you made, so that's irrelevant. The alimony is, is a good exchange for what a woman has given up. To be with you she gave up her entire life her body her dreams her hopes and everything else that she had that was connected with herself to become your wife now a lot of guys don't really think about that they feel like being married to them is a privilege no it's not no it's not a woman who gets married to you has basically unless you rich and balling and she can have like a nanny and a maid and all that stuff a driver and whatnot then she becomes like, you know, the chauffeur, the cook, the bottle washer, the nanny, the laundress, um, you know, Hazel, everybody all up in one, uh, plus holds down a job. And all the guy had to do was give up, you know, the fact that he thought he was going to be chasing tail for the rest of his life. 
that's it that's all they give up so it became necessary I thought you know this would be a really good kind because the woman was referencing you know where we should teach this to girls but what about those people before you know they're kind of in between they're not the girls and they're not yet uh, you know mothers and you know more mature people they might be like in their mid 20s to mid 30s maybe so I'm talking about that group that's kind of brainwashed to think that there's a certain type of behavior that the pattern that they have to follow in order to meet men's with men's approval enough to be a considered a wife and so you see all these women jumping through hoops and going through all these changes trying to figure out like well, okay how much do I need to give what do I need to do how do I need to earn this love and earn this title and earn his devotion and this th threat that he would leave him or that if she doesn't do this certain thing the way he wants it that he will leave her is one that really works on them and you got to also figure not only is this in, a, in the expectation that women um you know overgive and sacrifice themselves and eat the burnt toast is that a, the thought pattern in per, interpersonal relationships it's also the thought pattern of the men in government in this country and probably many others as well because they they want to control everything that women do they want you to have these babies but then they want at the same time they're cutting off programs to help support the children that they want you to have see they you know, they gonna say oh well you know you black women you know you just kill all the kids you know you having all these abortions but then they turn around and say all these you know, black women just have too many kids and they're not married and blah 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 okay which one is it you know and then you you want to be crowing and all excited because Donald Trump is you know you, you had the great white hope that he was going to cut off section 8 and food stamps so all these children and their mothers would be scrambling around trying to figure out what they were going to do to survive and you thought that was a good thing because then they would be forced to come and deal with your trifling two-bit piece of shit ass so this you know this whole mindset ladies i want to bring this to your attention so that you can understand the game that's being run on you by men you think is you know that this getting married and having all these kids and being with this man and all stuff is a privilege and it's a joy and all this stuff and it might be if he's the right kind of dude but for 90 percent of you filing for divorce obviously that was not the the dream didn't come true so again we're going to talk about some ways that women get tricked into being uh basically a slave to these men under the guise of being their wife okay and if you, some of these you don't even have to be the wife you just live with them and you still have the same you know dating them or whatnot you still have the same struggle so let's talk about these number one you single right you bouncing around you going to school you doing all the stuff you sacrifice that because now you are pregnant now you have a responsibilities of motherhood you got a little baby so you give up you say well I'm gonna drop out of college you can't get the demanding kind of job that you had before where you traveled all over the place it was very rewarding you made grand theft money so you had to quit that job and get just a regular little funky job so you could get off every day at five o'clock and go pick up your kid from daycare by six that's going to be your life for the next few years and it possibly longer because then you're whatever that career was you're out of the loop now so your skills are falling further and further behind your knowledge is not up to speed your experience level your resume is gonna have a big hole in it so that's something to think about you know you think you can get back on the job market or later but it's not gonna be the snap thing that you think it's gonna be so you give up your career options for the sake of family you give up your educational options for the sake of family and your husband and whatnot uh, that's a sacrifice that's a burnt toast because everything that you would have wanted for yourself it just went, went up in smoke and for, like I said for at least a few years possibly longer some women never go back they just can't do it because then they have a second kid and I mean you know things happen okay and number two what else women sacrifice their independence Men like to think they're the ones sacrificing their independence, but you know how men like to tell the women what they can't do because you, you're my wife. You know, my wife can't do that, and my wife can't do this, and my wife can't be there, and my wife doesn't need to go. So they want to start putting you in this little box about what their wife is. And you know, you see a lot of women are like, oh, you know, um, I don't know if I can go. I have to go home and ask my husband. I have to, you know, I have to see, I have to check with my man. 
So their, you know, their independence is like up in smoke too. Now some of them may be happy about that. I don't know. You know, some women are crazy, so they think that's cute. And uh, and the ones who kill me are the ones who say that they can't go and do something because their kids will be upset. What? This little, when this little monkey pay some bills? So you know they 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 really give up their independence, but. Like I said, sometimes I give them the side because it seems like they enjoy it. I don't know if they enjoy it or if it's just a you know, game they're playing with themselves to make themselves not feel so bad, but that they do say things like that. Number three, women sacrifice their appearance, their bodies. Now, everybody knows after you give birth, your body changes. You know, you nursing, your breasts change. Um, you might gain or lose weight. You know, your skin changes. All of these things happen, you know, some women, you know, they have like complications, they end up having to get a hysterectomy or some other kind of surgery. There's all kind of things that happen. It's a gamble. You don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, you want to just think about the cute little baby and all this stuff. And some women, you know, after they finish having their children, they can afford to go and get plastic surgery and get a tummy tuck and a breast lift and vaginal rejuvenation and all this old stuff. But that's not the most, that's not the majority of women. So you start having a kid, your body has changed forever, forever. And then these men want to complain about that. <laughs> and you don't want to pay no alimony after you done messed her body up like that with having your nappy-headed kids? Oh, no. You're going to pay. Number four. Women sacrifice their life goals. Now, these are women who, okay, say you have a goal like you wanted to go to, I don't know, you wanted to work in, with UNICEF or something. You were in a medical professional. You always wanted to go on a, on a UNICEF ship or something, to go to a hope ship or whatever those things are, some foreign country and do all this stuff. And now you got a husband and now you got a kid. Well, you know that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. You might have wanted to travel or, you know, see certain parts of the world and your husband doesn't like to travel and he, you can't bring the kids. So what you going to do? These are all things to think about. You know, you might want to go get you a Ph.D. or something. But, you know, you know, you got two or three kids. You can't really figure out how to juggle that and your eight hour a day job and your commute and your husband and your household and the children and go to school to get a Ph.D. all at the same time. How's that going to work? So you sacrifice that dream, too. Um, women sacrifice their needs ahead of the family. Now, what that means is you just, you know, you never think twice about sacrificing what you need to make the people in your household happy more so than you. It's like you are the kind, like these women who, are do, who do this kind of thing, they think their children's needs are more important than their own. They think that their wife's, their husband's rather, needs or desires should be met first because that's what's going to keep the family happy. And it doesn't matter how exhausted she is, how frustrated she is, how even sick or upset she is, she feels this obligation and this responsibility to keep all these other people happy even though she's not. So, you know, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. If I'm pissed, everybody in this house is going to know about it. Everybody. And all y'all going to get together and you're going to do something to fix it because at this very moment right now, I hate every single one of you. So, you know, that's me. I was a tyrant in my house. <laughs> Women sacrifice their time and their energy. Now, this one drives me crazy. Um, when it comes time to do something with the family, women are usually the first to change their, their obligations, their time, their work hours, whatever, to fit this stuff in. Okay, so like say you work, a, you have a job, you work six hours days this week. And they call you from your church asking you to come and help serve and clean up after the the fellowship and then all this old stuff. Now, you know you're exhausted, plus you have things that you need to do at the house. But what you decide to do instead of telling them, no, you're exhausted, is to go get up early, do the laundry and other stuff that you had to do, and then go and serve at this fellowship thing and then come home and do more housework for the same people who are capable of doing it themselves and then you go to work the next day exhausted and you never got to rest you never got to recharge your batteries you just giving 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 and eating burnt toast for six seven days a week i just don't get it also when a woman gets with a, you know in a couple situation what you had is your single carefree life, you give that up. You know, the, the little spur of the moment going out for drinks and dinner or something and the weekday parties and, and just the things that brought you joy that you could do 
without really thinking about you know having to arrange for other people's schedules or care about what other people thought about it you can't do that anymore you you have to think about these other people and um, even for when you have a situation where you have children if you notice most of the time the one taking them to the doctor the mama so who had to rearrange her schedule to do that the one taking off work when the kids are sick the mama why can't daddy take off work and take care of them you see what I mean it's, it, it's, it's a lot of sacrifice I think women don't even think about themselves doing. Also, women sacrifice their joy. This is something, I, I mean, when I think about women's joy, I think about the things that bring women pleasure and peace of mind. Maybe sitting like, you know, reading a book in the park bench or something, or taking a bubble bath and enjoying some wine, or, you know, watching a movie in peace with somebody, somebody asking you for something, or yelling in the background, or you have to tell them to stop fighting, stop crying, shut up, I can't hear my show, you know, can I watch this and that, blah, blah, blah. You don't get any, you don't get a moment's peace. You don't get to do what you want to do. You want to take a nap and everybody keeps coming in the room asking you for stuff, you know, making noise and demand and want to jump on the bed with you and all this old stuff. And you, women have a hard time telling your kids no. No, you're not going to go to that party. You're not going to that event. You're not going to that game because I'm tired of driving you around all the time. You have to eat what they want. You can't eat what you want, rather, because the kids or the husband don't like it. So you, if you fix what you want, then you feel like you have to fix a second meal for them because they like it. The hell? You, women be talking about what they can't do because their husband doesn't like it, like in their hairstyle, their makeup. Maybe they want to cut their hair. Maybe they want to dye their hair. Um, even something like, you know, you have this raggedy piece of job instead of the career that you wanted because you feel guilty about being away from home so much. Though men do that kind of stuff without a second thought. Did you think about that? <coughs> they don't think about what you're doing. They just come home and tell you, oh, yeah, this happened. I accepted this, this promotion, and it means we're going to have to move to blah, blah, blah. That's how they announce it. They don't ask you shit. But you guys feel real guilty about not asking them and getting their buy-in on everything. It's like a child. You have to set yourself up to be treated like a child. And you sacrifice your voice. And I've seen a lot of this lately. Um, you, women, you, you don't say anything. When somebody mistreats you, you don't, you, don't, you, know, you don't say a word about it. You don't check folks. You just say, oh, well, you know... Um, karma or you know god whatever is it no you have to tell people to stop mistreating you stop disrespecting you and that you're not going to accept the mess that they're trying to push down your throat because they feel like you're not as important to them and you believe it this is the attitude that's happening um with this trans stuff okay you women who support that mess with these men you know saying she and all this old stuff those men are you're sacrificing your voice in order to please these men you want to be in alignment with them versus what's in the best interest of you your daughters your nieces your grandchildren and the other little girls that are going to be coming behind you they don't need to see dicks in the locker room and they had a dress room and they don't need to see all that they just don't have no business in a woman's space but you ladies, you know, well, you know, that's, you're, you're wrong. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. They're women just like us. Ooh, stupid. And that is, you know, I'm seeing a lot of that where either the women don't want to speak up because they're afraid of the retribution, I guess, or they're speaking, they're using their voice to side with men against other women. So I don't know what that's all about, but whatever. That's an injustice that's being shown to women just like you know men trying to tell us what we can get as far as abortions and birth control on the health insurance that we pay for just like they do they can get my anger but we can't get birth control pills hell to the no that's not fair stuff like that you know women need to be rising up in in unison about that kind of thing but it's not happening and then my last point is that when women you know get into some of these relationships they sacrifice their autonomy and it's done with this expectation that they do so. It's like, 
you know, you have to start thinking about, you feel like rather anyway, that you have to start thinking about other people for in every decision that you make, from where you're going to live, to vacations you take, how much money you spend, whether you can have a girl's night and when you can have it, and how late you can stay out, and what to watch on TV, and what to stock in the pantry, because you know you got to worry about other people, if they like it, are they going to complain, what you wear, what time you can go to the gym, job transfers and promotions, it never ends. I mean, I could just go on and on and on, but these are things that you know these decisions that you used to make for yourself by yourself but now all of a sudden because you're in this relationship you have to consult this man and a lot of you consult your kids too before you make a decision so the whole point of this is to notice the many many ways that women sacrifice who and what they are to please other people to give to other people to take care of other people better and more often and more more just in every way possible more than you do yourself and to me that's just criminal you should not treat yourself like that you got to you know you make an appointment for other people to go to the doctor before you make one for yourself the dentist before you make one for yourself you know you need new shoes but you worry about buying them for other people that have perfectly good shoes to wear but you need them for your job so you know things like that and women just say oh you know I shouldn't do that I shouldn't buy myself that I shouldn't think like that I shouldn't go there because my husband might not like it things like that and I'm not telling you that not to do it I'm just pointing out the many ways that society and men have set women up to sacrifice themselves for the benefit of men and you guys don't even question it that's the point of this video so I want you to go away and consider all the points that I brought out I'm going to spit the special shout out to the poster who posted this comment that I took and made a whole video about it thank you very much because some stuff I've been wanting to say and just really just didn't do it but um, I'll be back in a day or two you know I just always got something to say about everything I got a topic on every I mean I have what you call it, opinion on everything in the world and I'll be back to share it with you Deb Cooper from survivingdating.com signing out.